Hey crafty people, it's Tasha here, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a video that I originally shared over on the Heffy Doodle page. I really hope you enjoy it. Recycling the packaging we get our craft supplies in is great, but actually being able to turn it into some paper crafting magic that you can send to someone you love is so much fun. Today we'll be using the Yappy Happy Mail stamp set deckled paper hugs die set and i've already cut the words from some double-sided adhesive foam then i have i've die cut a white panel with the smallest deckled die but an a2 panel of cherry red cardstock sugared berries sparkle mix O oh dorothy sparkles from wow and i also have these clay sprinkles from my stash and of course, some plastic packaging. This one was actually from a stencil. Let's start with creating a pattern background for the shaker panel. I've got my four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of cherry red cardstock, and I'm gonna be stamping free range. So that's acrylic blocks rather than a stamping platform of any kind. One huge tip for this is to stamp onto some sort of cushioned surface. I'm actually using my mouse pad from my Mini Misty, um, but use whatever you have. I don't have the security of being able to restamp as I can in my Misty if I don't get a full image. And having that cushion surface will help so much with your results when you are stamping free range like this. So I started with the large UK style post box image and I'm stamping this several times across my panel in Cranberry Fizz. As always, letting some of those images go past the end of the panel will make it seem like it's cut from a larger piece of pattern paper and it just gives it a much more cohesive look. After the post box, I'm using one of the little envelopes from the set and adding these into all of the open spaces between and around the post boxes. I'm twisting and turning the panel or sometimes my stamp to get a random mix of directions because that's how I personally like my stamped pattern paper to look. I'm getting smaller with each image I choose so that I can keep filling in the gaps. So now I'm using the little solid heart and I only wanted to use these three images today but if you wanted to have more then you'd just stamp less of each to give you the extra space that you'd need for more images. I thought these images work perfectly with the theme of sending a paper hug in the form of a handmade card plus those clay pieces I had in my stash match so well. Leaving that to dry whilst I work on my main sentiment. I've got some scrap paper to lay underneath because I'm going to add some gorgeous sparkles from WOW all over the top of this. This foam has adhesive top and bottom so all I need to do is remove the top release paper and pour the sparkles all over it. To make sure they stick well to the adhesive I'm gently pressing and rubbing over it with my finger. Then I can tip the excess off onto that scrap paper. I thought that I could use a little more on the top right hand side so I went in with another layer. I'm giving it a really good rub to make sure that I have completely covered the whole sentiment. Then I can tip that off again and just funnel it all back into the pot when I've finished. Now my stamped panel should be good to go and I've actually die cut it with the largest decal die so we're ready to work on that full panel shaker. If you've not seen one of these before, it's such a great way of adding a shaker element to your card, but without any of the bulk. We're not going to be using any foam adhesive to build the shaker at all. The stuff you get from your craft supplies is the perfect material for making these with, because you need that kind of flexible plastic packaging, and you also need it to be clear. So, I've cut the plastic down to be around an inch larger than my panel. And don't forget that this is just one sheet of plastic, so you'll get at least two panels of these from one piece of packaging, which I think is pretty awesome to be honest. I'm adding double-sided adhesive tape all around the edges on the back of my panel. 
Now I'm making sure that my panel is roughly in the centre of my plastic sheet and then I'll cut off some of the corners. You don't want to cut too close or you'll end up with openings that your shaker bits could get out of but we just want to take out a little of the extra bulk. Now I'm going to pull off the release tape and fold the plastic sheet around to seal three out of the four sides. We obviously need to keep one side open which will give us somewhere to add the shaker bits. I'm pulling the edges to make sure it isn't really loose but you don't want to make it too tight or your contents won't be able to move around very much. Once you have those three sides sealed you can go ahead and trim off any of the excess bulk that you still have in the corners but again don't cut too close or you'll have escaping innards. <laughs> Give the plastic a good press into that adhesive as well to make sure that it's bonded really well. Now you can fill it up with whatever you want to. This type of shaker does work best with flatter type embellishments like these clay pieces for example. But that also includes sequins and smaller jewels so Heffy Doodle's sparkle mixes are perfect. I'm using the clay pieces because they fit the theme of the card so well but I'm adding some extra glam and sparkle with the sugared berries mix too. Here's me incredibly awkwardly trying to tip some in without them getting caught on the adhesive strip that seals the packaging. Don't be like me. Just use a little tray or maybe a bigger spoon that can actually get a decent amount into the panel at a time. I was being lazy, cutting corners, but it actually makes it take me so much longer to do the task in the end. So yeah, that was just a waste of time. I'm also left fighting with static, covered in teeny tiny sequin bits and feeling more than a little annoyed at myself. I'd like to say that I learned my lesson here, but realistically, nah. <laughs> I'm gently giving it a shake to gauge whether I have enough bits in and I'm happy that this amount gives me a decent shake, but I can still see the background panel too. So I can peel off that last strip of release tape and seal the final side, cutting away the bulk again and that's because I want this to sit quite flat on my finished card. I covered the back with more sticky tape and I can attach it directly to an A2 card base or onto a separate panel if you don't store your panels on card bases. I'd planned to stick the sentiment onto this smaller decal die cut panel but I'm feeling like it covers up too much of that whole shaker panel. So instead, I'm going to pivot a little. I cut the shadow die for my sentiment instead, and I feel like that works much better. I still get the separation that I wanted to make my sentiment really pop, but I can still see much more of the panel. To finish off that sentiment, I'm stamping sending, which is also from the same stamp set that I used earlier. I did debate what colour to stamp it in, but eventually I settled on black to tie in the black lines that are on my clay pieces. I've trimmed it down to a small banner and I went for angled ends to match up with the angle positioning that I'll use for my die cut piece. Then I'm adding glue onto the back and placing this in the centre of my die cut sentiment. I like having that all a bit angled in the centre of my panel. It also matched in nicely to the stamping I did on the background and those tumbling clay pieces that are in my shaker too. For some extra fun and detail, I'm actually gluing a few of these clay pieces in and around my sentiment. I've got a blob of glue down on my glass mat so that I can pick up each piece one at a time with my reverse action tweezers and dip them into the glue, then place them on my card. That just makes sure I don't have too much glue on any of them, which would squish out onto my glitter. So this glue does dry matte and you'd see that if it was on the glitter anywhere. So I just felt that this was the best way to do it. So that's my card complete. I love that I can recycle the packaging to make a shaker that can go through the mail so much easier than a traditional one. Plus, I love how this one in particular turned out. It's all very on theme and I think that the more restricted colour palette was a really fun direction for me to go with. Thank you for spending this time with me today. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and as always, like, share, comment, all the things. Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.